Hey, this is Travis and welcome back to a new episode of Home Course. Today we're in beautiful Boca Raton, Florida, home of some of the most beautiful beaches in the country, home to some of the wealthiest in South Florida, and home to six-time PGA Tour champion and silver medalist at the 2020 Tokyo Games, Rory Sabatini. Rory's had a great career in the PGA Tour, eight worldwide wins. We're gonna go head out to his house and check it out. Let's go. Thank you for watching Home Course. I hope you've enjoyed watching the new series. We've got a great episode for you today and I'm excited to share it with you. Home Course is brought to you by Ultimate Golf, which happens to be my favorite game on my phone. Ultimate Golf is a free download that you can get by clicking the link in the description of this video and is available on Google Play and the Apple App Store. With real courses and challenges, Ultimate Golf is great to play against your friends, your family, and oftentimes can play against notable celebrities as well. Again, we hope you're enjoying Home Course and thank you to our presenting sponsor, Ultimate Golf. What's going on, man? Hey, Travis. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you again. Good to see you, good see you good. Good. Come beautiful, on in. Beautiful place here. Oh, thank you, come on in. All right. This is a rough life when your winter's like this. <laughs> Yeah, just uh, escape the uh, Texas cold that we've got going on. All right, so you guys have lived here for a couple of years now, but it's, it's, yeah, it hasn't years. always been like this. Uh, you guys have done a lot of work here to the home, so walk us through a little bit. Well, yeah, no, we, uh, we got lucky. We moved down here for the school uh, district, and uh, it's a good school district, but you know, obviously COVID hit, so everything went crazy, but uh, it gave us a lot of time to work on the house. So we, uh, we got the house, it was uh, very, a very Tuscan style, um, you know, very heavy texture on the walls, you know, marble floors, you know, just uh, lo a lot of dark, you know, elements to the house that we just wasn't us. So yeah. my, my wife and I were kind of contemporary people. So we came and we ripped everything out. We, you know, redid all the walls, took the floors up, redid all the floors, you know, basically did everything. Didn't leave a, a stone unturned and. Uh, did the whole house and turned it into contemporary. So, yeah. yeah. And my wife, my wife keeps thinking I work at Home Depot because I'm always there. <laughs> um, but no, so you know, obviously for us, we spend most of our time in this room. Yeah. So we wanted it. And my wife and uh, mother-in-law, they they do cooking every day. So, um, you know, she wanted a kitchen that was you know usable for her for her passion and. So she designed everything. She well, she pretty much designed the entire house. The only thing I got to do was the the grill area. Yeah. But um, no, she designed everything else, and it came out good. Even though most of the time I was telling her she was absolutely nuts for trying to do it, but I was like, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. And then yeah, if, after it was done, I was like, oh my god, it's amazing. Got double fridge here, so you're fully yeah, stocked well, up. Well, obviously, when you're in a house, the, you know, for me, the biggest problem I always have is you know, you never have enough refrigerators. So I wanted double refrigerators because I wanted storage and yeah. I'm scared to open and see what's actually in there. My mother most <laughs> cooked something. But yeah, so we did double refrigerators, we put um, freezer drawers on the island. Um, but as I said, we spend most of the time in here. So, you know, my wife, as I said, cooks a lot. My mother in law cooks a lot. So she didn't want just a regular vent to hood. We put in like an industrial one. Um, don't recommend getting yeah. any long hair near it. We stuck it right <laughs> up in there. but. Uh, yeah, it would be, so be problematic. She, she came up with this amazing design and I remember she was actually flying back uh, from somewhere and she'd come up with this design and I went and picked out the slabs for the island and the countertops and I called her and said, hey, um, I changed the color of the countertops and she's, she was flying, she was actually flying back from Europe <laughs> and I was it's texting her while text. she was on the plane. <laughs> And she was, she said she spent about three hours bawling eyes like, oh, I've just messed everything up. And then when she actually got back and saw it, she's like, oh, actually, I like it. So <laughs> it was like a sigh of relief. I was like. Let's say that's a dangerous text to send, so. Yeah, well, that's why I waited until she was on the plane. <laughs> Smart man. Yeah. <laughs> Smart man. So. Let's take a look over here. I see all your trophies and some accomplishments. Most of these are actually my wife's. 
Yeah. I'd hate to uh, admit it, but most of them are wives and from her playing golf, she's only been playing golf maybe seven years now and she's down to like a 14 handicap. She's actually out today playing in the ladies club championship. But yeah, I've got a few trophies there, some memorabilia from different things. Um, uh, obviously it's kind of a mess right now because I just put stuff up because we still haven't that's cool though, you guys are a team anything. though. You know, you guys both have some accomplishments and trophies up here. It's yeah. Obviously, you being a Texas boy, you'll like this. Because <laughs> I can actually say I won this. Yeah, you have, yes. <laughs> that's, uh, that's my uh, belt buckle from the Crown Plaza Colonial. Got the beautiful so. jacket to go with it too. Oh yeah. That's awesome. Hey, you know what? It doesn't matter. If you win a golf tournament and you get a jacket with it, you're going to be happy with it. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Yeah. I've just got, you know, as I said, got trinkets. Um, Back when I was with Nike, they did the black golf ball and I won and so they did a, a Rory spread so they gave me a thing with my name. Um, this stuff's normally not here but my Christmas present from my stepson, he drew Mount Fuji for me, painted it for me. <laughs> That's awesome. We got our dogs, so I've got that for my wife because they really are spoiled. Uh, the catalog, the Slovak Olympic Committee did for us from the Olympics um, and then all the pins from the countries I traded with. Oh, so I've got some unique ones on there. Um, obviously, every country had different numbers of athletes. So sure. Yeah. I got Nepal, which they only had uh, I think two or three athletes there. So it was pretty hard to get. How many athletes were there representing Slovakia? There were, um, I believe, like 18 of us. So the entire contingency, including the coaches, the medical staff, everything, I think was about 40. Okay. Yeah. So a pretty small team. That's. Yeah. So actually on the cover, this is the girl from Slovakia, Susanna, and uh, she actually won gold for shooting. Oh. Yeah, ski shooting. She uh, actually set a new world and Olympic record that can never be beaten. She uh, went perfect through every round. Oh, that's amazing. So I met her husband. I said, yep, been up to, uh, been on Neuer. She'll, she'll shoot you and she's a pretty good shot. <laughs> so he goes, yep, I've heard that before. Be careful, my man. Which ironically enough, uh, in the Paralympics, the, the uh, guy from Slovakia won a gold, also setting a new world record and Olympic record. Yeah. So. Well, you did pretty good at the Olympics yourself too. So, I mean, obviously thought to take in and talk about that week, that experience, mm -hmm. but um, coming in, shot lights out on the final day. Yeah. You know, 61, I mean, incredible. Uh, winning the, the silver medal, um, amazing accomplishment. I mean, well, walk us you. through that. I mean, I, seeing it on TV and watching it, uh, the only other round like I've seen that I felt like similar to that was when Furyk went out and shot a 58. It was just like watching you out there, it was like, I think his was more impressive. I was actually playing right in front of him the day <laughs> he did that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it was just like watching you in the zone, like everything was just going and hit, you know, you were hitting the ball so well, making pots. Mm -hmm. and it was like, man, when you're playing like that, are you just blacked out? Just, just a, what does that feel like for someone who low round for me is, you know, in my mid seventies. Mm -hmm. All right. So let me explain to you this way. You ever gone to the range in the morning and gone hit golf balls, getting ready for a round and you're hitting everything perfect. You're making every putt on the putting green. You go on the golf course and nothing works. Yeah. Okay. I was the exact opposite. I went to the range. I'm warming up in the range. I hit like 20 balls, handed them my driver to my wife. I go, well, can't find it here. Maybe we'll find it out there. Went out on the golf course and just, yeah, things clicked. Really? It was complete opposite. So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, so weren't feeling anything special that morning? I had probably, I had probably one of the worst warm-ups I've ever had. Uh, honestly, I was like, I don't even know why I'm gonna go out and play golf today. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, hey. Wow. Flying squirrel found a nut. <laughs> Apparently, so, man. Funny story was that we were flying to the Olympics and I told my wife on the plane while we we're flying, I said, hey, I read this article about you know, sports psychology and about breathing and you know, this 315, you breathe in for three seconds, you hold for one, you breathe out for five. And it kind of releases endorphins in your brain, tricks you into being a calm and relaxed state. And he's like, okay. So I was like, you know, anytime you sense me getting, you know, annoyed on the golf course, just let me know. You know, remind me, 315. Okay. So we played Thursday, played Friday, get out there Saturday, everything's going wrong Saturday. I get to like the 14th hole, I'm one over par. I hit the shot and I'm just annoyed. And she looks at me, she goes, hey, remember, 315. And I just turn around, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and she just stuck. I took about maybe 30, 40 steps and I kind of chuckled. I was like, okay. And I buried a couple coming in and got it to one under. Well, I'd played myself so far back. I was like, Sunday, I've gone out there. I was like, uh, you know, but I got no chance. You know, mm -hmm. maybe if some miracle happens, I can maybe somehow, you know, get in the top 10. Yeah. So we're sitting at dinner the night before and, you know, typically I drink vodka. <laughs> so 
well, Tokyo, you can't find vodka. And I'd drunk all the Smirnoff ice as I could, I'd gotten. <laughs> so I'm like sitting there, I'm like, well, you know what? I'm like, hon, you told me when I, when I drink beer, I play bad golf, so I started drinking vodka. I'm playing bad golf right now, so you know, screw it. I'm gonna have a beer. So I had a beer. So the next morning we wake up and we had breakfast and her cousin's the president of the Slovak Golf Association. So we're sitting at breakfast and he's there with us and he goes, well, you know what, just go shoot 10 under today. I'm like, okay. <laughs> be so get to the range, that happens, then I shoot 10 under. He goes, see, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So, well, here it is right here. Let's, uh, yeah. let's take a look at it. So, yeah, this is the medal right here. So it's a collection of uh, badges from being competitors for Slovakia. The little uh, man that gave me the, the mascot from the Olympics when I got the flowers with the with the medal. And um, yeah, so that's it right there. It's got a little bit of wear and tear in it from some travel. Um, character. Oh, character. Yeah. That's, that's beautiful. So, yeah, and then it's, they've got it on the bottom there, whatever sport you're in. So it's actually, it's amazing. Do you remember that picture of Michael Phelps when he stand there with his arms spread with all the yeah. and with all the medals on yeah. his arm? Imagine what, he's got like 40 of them. <laughs> yeah. So imagine how heavy his arms must have felt standing there for a photo. So it's, it's yeah, not you, exactly light. Yeah, you don't think that this is heavy, but yeah, I can't imagine with that picture. This is actually, um, I bought this at a charity event that uh, Arnold Palmer was at, um, luckily for me happened that he signed it and then Boyston Men and Rascal Flats were there and uh, they both jumped on the band both groups jumped on the bandwagon and signed it also so That's it's so signed cool. by Arnold Palmer, Rascal Flats and Boyston Men. Quite the collection right yeah. there. Yeah and uh, it was uh, it was ironic because it was uh, right after Cars came out and Rascal Flats was commenting on the song and Boyston Men actually had the song originally and passed on it and gave it to and so Rascal Flats picked it up and Boys to men were like, well, gee, we didn't know we were giving you such a gift. Yeah, on so, a, yes. what a gift that was. But uh, obviously, Arnold Palmer just, uh, that's How enough cool said is right this? there. Yeah, yeah, this is so cool. So, that's, Probably the coolest signature, I think, of all time. I love that. Yep, he's, he's got a, he's definitely, you know, an icon in, in golf yeah. and in business. Yeah. You know? He really was probably the, the trendsetter, and him and Gary Player, and, you know, establishing you know, a business sense in the golf world. Yeah. So, this is a very traditional Slovak drink. Um, it is actually made. This one's made from pears. So this one is called uh, Ruskovica. Okay. And um, it's basically like I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a small man. Okay. I don't. I don't want you to be like falling over. <laughs> but so this is a very traditional Slovak drink. Yeah. And it's kind of their version of moonshine. Okay. Cheers. It, it'll, it'll leave a little pinch. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So this is this is this was the main culprit on the Sunday night after the Olympics. <laughs> okay. I don't know how many balls of this were drunk, but yeah, this is um, yeah. good stuff. It's, it's yeah, it's jet fuel. We hope you're enjoying Home Course and thank you to our presenting sponsor, Ultimate Golf. Ultimate Golf is a free download that you can get by clicking the link in the description of this video and is available on Google Play and the Apple App Store. This is where, uh, this is where I'd probably spend most of my time is right, out here. This, so. this, this is where, yeah, exactly. This is where we do. So well, I don't pool. know how many times I fall asleep on the couch a, out here. You got a beautiful beach here, but I'm a pool guy. This is, this is a great setup here. Well, we redid the pool, resurfaced it, redid it. So it's all salt water. I actually just turned the temperature down last night. It, it's normally 90 degrees all year round. Well, except for summer, it's like 95 in the summer. Yeah. But um, yeah, so it's come out here. And, but this is where I spend most of my time. I'm always like trying to cook outside. So as I said, this was, this was the only thing I got to design. So, you know, I was, you can never have enough ice out here. So I did a drop in, a drop in ice uh, bucket that holds uh, 60 pounds of ice. There you go. Uh, just my grill, got all my tools, everything down there, trash can. I got my refrigerator, which is getting low on alcohol, but it's still there. <laughs> but, got your yeah. stash here, got the yep. green egg. I keep my keep plates out here, everything like this. I got my sink and then TV, and then uh, those are tiki torches I got to put up still. So, and then I got a burn out here and I got a hibachi grill that goes on and a wok so I can do 
fried rice and scallops and stuff like that. So you you cook a ton, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, this thing's been worn in pretty badly. So I was doing burgers, so that's why I got the silicone plates on there. Okay. But yeah, my uh, I do a fire, what I call my fireball steak. I uh, I do a very heavy Creole, spicy Creole seasoning on it, and you know I I go get the bone and fillets that are about three inch thick. Yeah. Um, so I'm cut, I smother with a heavy coat of that. I put that on the grill, and then while it's on the grill, I pour a fireball on it and it ignites. So it, the, the fat on the steak with the alcohol makes it caramelized, and it gives it kind of a sweet and spicy flavor. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So I do that, and then I got my green egg for when I'm doing turkeys and other things. So it does a great job at cooking turkeys and you know, other things. I do chicken on there because, yeah. I don't know, green egg just cooks different. But yeah, so I spend most of the time in here. I got my TV. Oh, this is awesome. You got tons of room for entertainment. You got the bar set up here. You got a little table. And then the nice thing is because I got no neighbors on one side of me, I got all my speakers on the outside of the house pointing this way so we can blare music. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at the ride. So, new addition to the family here, huh? Yeah. Um, I'm a, I, I love Ford trucks. I had, I've had two F 150s that I love, and but I don't like paying for gas. <laughs> yeah, gas um, is expensive these days. It's, uh, yeah, it's getting ridiculous. And also, you know, trying to be a little bit more eco-friendly. Yeah. So, uh, no, I uh, had never driven a Tesla and I bought my wife one. Um, and honestly, loved it so much, um, I had to get one myself. Yeah. So I got rid of my truck and I got the smaller SUV, but they're, honest to God, after owning one, I'll never go back to a regular car. There's no chance. What, so what model is this? This is the Model Y. Um, you know, I've driven the Mustang Mach-E, I've driven Audi's e-tron, um, there's nothing that competes with Tesla. Yeah. There's just nothing. It's just, they're, the convenience, the safety, the performance, you know, they're just... These things are incredibly fast, like zero to 60 is what? Like four, like four, 4.2 seconds. <laughs> um, but yeah, this one... I'll get 330 miles on one charge. So, you know, obviously when you drive, you don't have to keep having to pull over to charge up. But this one, you you know, it's driving long enough that you don't need to be driving any more than that before taking a rest. And anyway. when you charge up, how long does it take? And uh, so this one to fully charge at, a te at one of the Tesla chargers is probably about 30, 35 minutes. Okay. But the, all their chargers, there's dining, there's food uh, options like yeah doing. exactly it's not there's something to do it's not like you're just sitting in you know the middle of nowhere yeah cheaper than 130 bucks yeah it's it, i think well in florida's uh electrics is probably one that i think it's the cheapest in the country so this one's probably about four, four between four and five bucks to charge up wow yeah all right roy thanks for letting us in your home man we appreciate it appreciate it Dude, thanks, congrats Brad. on all your success thank you um obviously through your whole career 24 years on the pj tour that's an impressive feat alone right there but beautiful family beautiful home congrats again on the olympics thank you. amazing um good luck you're heading out to hawaii to go play in the sony yeah um be rooting for you so thank you. hopefully get a, uh, another w this year and oh, uh i'll tell you what uh, things That'd be, that'd be like a grandfather winning a, a road race, a running race, you know, it's uh, it's getting tougher out there, but I, thank you, I appreciate it. But no, seriously, congrats on all your accomplishments and I uh, hope you guys continue to grow and uh, yeah. continue with your success. Thank you, I appreciate that. Thanks, bud. Thank you guys for watching an episode of Home Course and we'll see you next week.